Greetings, how are you? I know, I have a face now. But what I want to talk about in this video is some of the non-destructive modeling techniques that I use and how I use certain add-ons, namely hard ops and box cutter, when it comes to creating realistic video game props. In this case, the weapon design that I've been using for the last six videos or so, but I'm also going to go over some of my other past weapon design projects. Now, I'm not someone who adheres to a non-destructive workflow when it comes to 3D modeling, but there are a lot of non-destructive tools that I use that are very instrumental, especially when it comes to modeling more complicated forms and volumes that would be far more difficult to achieve when it comes to the traditional poly modeling tools. So that's really what I hope you get from this video is that it expands your knowledge of the tools that you have available to you, especially when it comes to more difficult 3D modeling challenges. So before we jump into the video, if you're having technical difficulties with anything, feel free to leave a comment below or consider checking out my Discord server where we have a growing community of awesome people who would be happy to give you helpful feedback and advice on anything that you're working on from 3D modeling, texturing, sculpting, not rigging. That one's still kind of tricky, but we'll give you our two cents nonetheless. So please consider checking it out. Okay, so whenever you're working on a project where you're gonna be modeling something from real world reference, it's important to take a very close examination of your reference so you can sort of form a plan of attack of how you're going to go about this. And this is really the point where I come up with my ideas of how I'm going to start modeling using some of these non-destructive techniques. Early on, I knew that one of the most difficult parts of this weapon design would be accurately recreating the upper and lower receiver, as this area has a lot of complicated volumes and curvilinear forms that all have to mesh and fit together appropriately. However, as I try to closely examine the shape of the upper and lower receiver, I can break it down into some very basic shapes that mainly just consists of cube cylinders with a number of extrusions and insets. But to put all these together using only normal poly modeling tools would be very difficult. So I start to form my plan of how I'm gonna use more non-destructive booleans in creating my main block out of this weapon. So going into Blender, when it came to blocking out the upper and lower receiver, I started with a simple plane object, which I solidified and then extruded out to the basic silhouette shape of the weapon's receiver. From here, I begin to carve out the shape of the upper and lower receiver by using a very fast non-destructive workflow of adding volumes that are used to either subtract or add to this mesh. And if I go through the modifier stack here, you can see the sort of changes that are being made with each Boolean operation. And as you're working in this workflow, Blender creates this automatically generated collection called Cutters, which stores all the volumes that you use for all your Boolean operations. And from here, you're still able to go and select any one of these little Boolean operators, go into edit mode, and then move around, scale, and rotate any of them and change the position of whatever operation that you created. So while I'll use poly modeling tools to make alterations to the volumes that I'm using for these Boolean operations, I like to try and get as much value as I can from using this non-destructive workflow. So for the carry handle, when I wanted to create this groove for the rear sight, I used this volume to cut out the center of the carry handle. But rather than create a bevel by going into edit mode, I used a bevel modifier instead. This way I could actually change the shape profile and width, as well as the number of segments that I was using to make this Boolean operation. And if I bring up the rest of the high poly model, you can see there are a few other areas where I use Boolean, such as cutting out the front sight and certain parts of the gas block and the flash hider. Now, like I said before, I'm not someone who focuses on only working in a non-destructive workflow, but I'll try to maintain this sort of workflow for as long as I can usually until some element of it becomes inconvenient for me to continue doing so. It's also far more effective to use Boolean operations when you feel there might be a need for more rapid iterations later on or sudden adjustments to your topology that would be more difficult to do with traditional poly editing tools. 
And this is one of the key areas where I think having an at least semi non-destructive workflow is very useful for working on realistic models from real world reference. So let's move on to an example from another one of my weapon design projects. This one also incorporated a number of Boolean operations in the creation of a complicated form. Once again, the upper carry handle, which also includes this incorporated flashlight component. And in many ways, my method of modeling this weapon design was to create parts that were in no way separate from each other individually, such as the main pistol grip for this weapon is actually a separate part, which I can drag off here, that is then just unionized with the lower part of the enclosure. And the same way with this upper carry handle, I broke it down into more simpler forms, such as a cylinder for the flashlight and several other subtractive volumes to cut out these little divots. And likewise, if I select the upper part of this carry handle and I go to the modifiers, I can turn off the modifier stack and you can see what my basic shape consists of. Also, if I turn these back on, I can also take this upper part, which should be joined to the upper section of the enclosure, and I can join them together with Control Plus. Now, this upper part with the carry handle and all the Boolean operations that comprise it is now joined to the upper part of the enclosure. I can also just go ahead and disable the cutters collection in the viewport, and you can see that it's pretty successfully merged all these parts together. Now, you might be wondering, well, isn't cleaning this mesh up a bit of a burden? Because once you finally collapse everything, you're going to have probably a fair amount of N-Gons. And those will all have to be reconciled before you can go for the process of actually exporting this into a video game engine. And probably before you can go about texturing it. And while we're on the topic, we might as well talk about hard ups a little bit because it is really something that I find helps to streamline this sort of workflow. So while I've tried to keep the tutorial videos mainly focused to fairly vanilla Blender, hard ups is something that has always really helped accelerate my modeling process, especially when it comes to doing this sort of work. And there's so many nifty little optimizations when it comes to working non-destructively or getting good topology that I often seem to take for granted. If you go into your Q menu, there's so many useful tools that you have quick access to here, and they're already all well optimized to the sort of settings that you're going to want when you're working on hard surface designs. So basically, whenever it comes to creating more complicated volumes or working with anything that I showed in my high poly modeling techniques video, hard ops is one of the most instrumental add ons that you could get. There is a link to the hard ops box cutter bundle in the description below. So thanks in advance for supporting the channel to anyone who decides to purchase it. It is really one of the most useful add ons you could probably get in Blender. Likewise, I'll probably be doing some more videos soon enough that are more focused on hard ops and box cutter and where they fit in the game asset production pipeline. There is more content coming up and it doesn't just revolve around real world weapon modeling. Currently, I've also started doing a little bit of live streaming and we're working on some vehicle modeling. Oh boy, so be on the lookout for that. I hope you found some part of this video useful. If you're having technical difficulties with anything, feel free to leave a comment below or consider joining the Discord server. Otherwise, social media links in the bio, like and subscribe.